I was just going to say that last thing about Anita Morjani, you know, for those of you who don't know her story, or I talk about it a little bit in Heal, but she had the near-death experience, which your dad kind of discovered, Anita, and that story, because it was so profound. Her body physically was as far gone as a human body could be. Her organs were shutting down, lemon-sized tumors coming through her skin from her neck to her abdomen. Um, just no way that anyone would look at her physical body and say that it could recover. It was as late stage cancer as you can get. And she had this, she went to the other side, the other, the next phase Mm -hmm. and had this beautiful encounter with her father who they had this tumultuous relationship with. She, she experienced that unconditional blissful love, which is, you know, where we, the next phase and So she was able to shift her consciousness, lose all fear of death. And like you said, it's an envy. She's envious of anyone who crosses over because she knows what's waiting for us. And Mm -hmm. that love, that shift in consciousness, she came back into her body and her whole physical body healed with that new consciousness vibration frequency of love that is beyond, you know, any human definition in words. Um, And so I love that your dad embodied love on this, on this planet. And then, you know, that's why he looked forward. He knew where he was headed, but we talk about and heal like love is truly the highest frequency. It's the greatest healer. And I want to talk about his healing story, but Sage, when you were six, if you could just share the bumps story, because (laughs) kids, kids are connected to that other side. They're so connected with the imagination. It's so powerful. And, and the kids, you know, are perfect examples of how, if you believe and you use your imagination and you use love, you can heal. So tell us the best. Before Sage, before Sage starts, I just want to say, before we came on this, Sage said, do you think because I think I should bring up my bump story because it really fits in with heel. And I was yeah, like, well, yeah. I watched your documentary you just last said. night and I was like, this is exactly what I experienced, you know, as a child. And then I would say, like you said, children are more connected. No doubt. I was more connected than, than I am now. It takes more effort now to connect to that kind of place, but yeah, I'll, I'll share it. I'll try and make it uh, brief. I, when I was about five years old, I developed a rash on my face of bumps And, um, my parents, you know, after they were never too worried about medical things, they didn't panic, take us to the doctor and put us on antibiotics or anything like that. But after a few weeks, they weren't going away. Um, so my parents took me to the doctor and they told me that these bumps were flat warts and what they told my parents and that, um, that they should go away on their own and that they're pretty common in kids and they're not dangerous. And, um, the, they, I, I made my parents promise they wouldn't tell my siblings that I had warts on my face because I knew what that would do. So that's why they were called my bumps. Um, so, so we went home from that appointment. I forgot about it, whatever. A lot of time goes by like over a year and they are still not gone and they're in fact getting worse. So uh, my parents took me back to another doctor and they said, um, you know, we really should treat these. If they go on this long, you should, you should treat them with drugs or they they said that there's a medication you can take and it uh, may or may not work. It's going to make you peel. It's going to make you red. You have to stay out of the sun. It had all these side effects and on and on. Um, And I was my, I was like, I don't want to do that. My parents allowed us to have a say in our bodies from a young age. And um, for me, it was, I don't want to stay out of the sun. I mean, you know, I loved playing outside. So then they said, you have the other option would be, you could burn them off, like freeze dry them off. And, um, but the doctor said it's going to, could leave scarring. It could be painful. It is going to be painful. There's going to be scabs, you know, on and on. And I've heard that. And I was like, no way we're, are we burning these things off? They didn't even bother me. I was six. I didn't look in the mirror. You know, uh, the only thing I remember about them is when I would touch my face, it wouldn't be smooth. But um, so So my parents said, okay, you know what? We'll give it a little more time. We're not gonna make her do either of these things. Another year or even more goes by and they're still there. They're still spreading. They were close to my eyes at this point. It was obvious when you looked at me because my skin would tan, but they wouldn't. So, um, so it, you know, it was like time to do something. So my parents took me to a dermatologist in Hawaii when we were out there and he, uh, 
basically said the same thing the other doctor did. He said, these are your two treatment options and we should really do one of them. My parents then um, said, you know what, can we talk to you outside? And they stepped outside with the doctor and then they came back in the room and they said to me, okay, we've, we've spoken to the doctor and we have come up with a third option for you because I still didn't want to take medicine, had all these side effects or freeze them off, you know? And they said, um, your third option would be to talk to your bumps and to heal yourself of this. You can spend time every night talking to your bumps and, and you can heal yourself. You have that power within you. And I said, great, I'm going with that option. <laughs> Sounds like the best <laughs> one. So we went home uh, and that night uh, when I got into bed, I pulled the covers over my head and I talked to my bumps for about five minutes before I fell asleep. Nobody told me what to say. Nobody told me, you know, what time of day to do it. They just said, consistently talk to your bumps. And um, I did that for three nights. On the fourth night, I got in bed to talk to my bumps and I reached up and I touched my face and I was so used to having a bumpy complexion and I couldn't believe that I, it was completely smooth. I couldn't find a single one. I was like, so I ran out of my bed and I ran into my parents' bedroom and I was like, they're gone, they're gone. And they were like, what's gone? What are you talking about? And I was like, my bumps, they're gone. And I remember my dad pulled me up close and he was like, oh my God, Marcy, put your glasses on, they're gone. <laughs> and, you know, and they, they were like, we can't find a single one. And then my dad was like, what did you say to them? <laughs> And I said, uh, it's a secret. <laughs> and he started to tickle me and um, tell me that this was material for his work and that I needed to tell him what I said because that this was a miracle. You know, for th almost three years, I had these bumps and now in three days, they were gone without a trace. And um, he, he continued to bribe me. He gave me, he was like, I'll give you $20. We can go get ice cream. Like, come on, you got to <laughs> tell me what you said. And I wouldn't tell him, but about 10 years later, when I was 18, we were talking about it again. Um, he continued to ask over the years. I even wrote a, a, for a, an essay in school, but I ended the essay with, and I don't tell anybody what I said to my bumps, you know? <laughs> <laughs> and, um, and he included that in his book, Spiritual Solution to Every Problem. But so when I was like 18, I was like, you know, I'll tell you what I said to my bumps. I don't know why I've kept it a secret so long. I think I just liked the attention I was getting. And, um, I, I told him that what I said to my bumps was I very simply told them that I loved them and I appreciated them, but that we couldn't be together anymore and that they had to leave. And that, um, and, and I just, I continued to send them love. I did it, it all, it was in a child's voice. It was, you know, my eight-year-old little voice, but it was all done with love and compassion. It wasn't threatening. It wasn't, I'm gonna burn you off if you don't leave within a week, you know? And um, my dad was really taken back by that. And he right then on the spot called the dermatologist because the dermatologist could not believe when my dad called him that they were gone. And he also wanted to know what I said. So on the spot, he called him because they were friends. And um, he started to cry and he said, I'm just so moved because I would have pictured that she would have waged war against them and threatened them but she did it with love and they, and it, and her body, my body just responded so quickly. And I, I looking back as an adult, I think that it was because not only did I do it with love, like you talked about, but I also did it without doubt, you know, at right. that age, my parents telling me that I could heal my body was enough of a reason for me to believe wholeheartedly that I could. And so I went into it with a knowing that this was going to work. You know, this will be the last doctor I have to see about this. This will be the end of bumpy skin. And yeah, I mean, so I, I try to remember that. I wrote about it in the book and I try to remember it now because it, it is different as an adult yeah. for sure. Right. The kids just buy into, especially what your parent, the authority in your life, you think your parent at that age knows everything. So if right. they give you the, you know, agency and, and say, you have the power to heal. You're going to be like, Oh, of course I do. And yeah, then you just go great. do it. It's, exactly. And I just, I think it's such a beautiful story because, you know, in Western medicine, we tend to fight, we tend to wage war on cancer or 
you know, anything else in our body. We now have this new epidemic of autoimmune where our bodies are attacking itself. We even use the word attacking itself right, and battling cancer. I mean, and, when don't you yeah, do that? And fuck cancer. And, and it's just right. this anger. And again, it's in that energy of resistance to what is when I've heard so many stories of spontaneous healing and radical remission, when you realize cancer is just us, you know, your human cells that have gone AWOL, they've got, you know, they've been isolated, they've kind of gotten mentally ill, if you will. Right. And so they need love, they need, they need to be held as well. And so that energy, if you can switch and love and, and, and say, thank you, look, I don't have all the answers. It's not guaranteed, you know, that it's going to work every time, but it is an approach that has worked so many times when you just really embrace and approach it from love and acceptance rather than fighting and resistance. Well, and I think also to just say on top of that, it's also the faith because what Sage was saying, I think is so true. She had complete and total faith because our parents were the ultimate authority. And so if they said you could heal yourself, and our parents had demonstrated by the way they lived their lives that um, they believed in that kind of thing. So this wasn't coming out of left field, right? To have to be told that, you know, you had the power right. to create or do or achieve or manifest anything you wanted in your life. That was something that we heard all the time. So when she was told this, this didn't um, contradict anything, right? She had total yeah, it was like, faith. oh, normal, you know, yeah. I can talk yeah. to my bumps. So why didn't I think of that? Thank you for listening to the Heal Podcast. Be sure to tune in for more empowering wisdom and inspiring healing stories. Oh, and make sure you hit the follow button on Apple, Spotify, or wherever you listen to podcasts so you don't miss that one episode that holds the answer you've been searching for. And if you feel inspired, we would love you to rate and review us so that we have the opportunity to reach more people. And of course, you can follow us on Instagram for some behind the scenes fun and more inspiration at at Heal Documentary and at Kelly Gore. Thank you so much and be well.